<laughs> I really wanted to do it for just like if people from college wanted to, like to know about me. I was like, just watch this. Just hear me rant about stuff for so long because, and I can say my like, we can finish my last part with the story, the Bramble story, the actual life. Because the first time we did it, there wasn't so much story into it, but this one, I can bring it all up. I got more information. All right. So when I was born, I used I, the last time I said it, I was like, doctors told me I wouldn't be able to walk, I wouldn't be able to talk and such. Well, in reality, I wouldn't be able to talk, I wouldn't be able to graduate high school, and I have weird muscle tones, and it'll be around my shoulder and my neck. And it was, I spent five years of in and out therapy to, and my only break was sleep, to actually process everything. My first sentence when I was six, um, and when I was and when I was like one, I lived in Baton Rouge for eighteen months in my first like beginning of my life, and my dad, uh, my mom were getting a divorce at the time when I was just a little baby, and so when I came here to plus the ULM, I uh, I did therapy in the ULM center, and that's where I go to college now, and I love it. Um, it caused me stressful, but it's okay. But throughout the time. I had to deal with some issues. I had to deal with people telling me I couldn't do this and that. And I kept showing I can do this, I can do that. And when I was six, I always wanted to inspire people to do what they wanted to do, no matter what the setback is. And I thought, I could be a wrestler. I could be a legit wrestler. So wrestling is what helps me through my whole entire life. I probably wouldn't be the person I am today without it. So I kept training when I was six to now to be this wrestler. I found my voice, I found everything to it, and I found a style that I can have to stand out with. And I just appreciate it. And I love everything about it. it. sucks is that I can't be in wrestling schools or such, but I can keep trying. And people always think that it's tough being you know me because I had to deal with growing up through my therapy sessions, I had to deal with mental middle vision, where this center line was like always there. And it was something to my left, I would never grab it. It took a lot of time to actually get that. It took a lot of time to actually like learn to grasp with my left hand and my right through the left side. And become an impedentious or however it's pronounced. But I think I screwed. And hearing all these false facts about things and such, it about you get autism through shots. That's not how it works. It really doesn't. The doctor got his license suspended, and I got told getting getting a little bullied at school for having autism because I was just a bit different. I wasn't being social and such. I'm still not the social guy, but I'm breaking out of it. But life comes in a lot of interesting colors, in interesting ways. There's constantly going to be something going on wrong in your life, but you got to know how to make a positive happen. I've had stuff go wrong always, somehow, but I've had to keep my mind happy. And I'm happy where I am right now because I because years ago, I was in the mindset of maybe people's lives would be better if I was dead. I was Because people with autism mostly kill themselves in their teens. And I was just never happy. I was never... And I don't have a second conscience. People with autism, they don't have a second conscience. They have to throw a good mental mindset to not do stuff. And I, and it took years, but I did it. A lot of people, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm the nicest person you'll ever meet. Hands down. If everybody, somebody needs something, I'm there. I'm there to care. I'm there to show support. And maybe that's hurt me a few times. Maybe that hasn't, but I'm always there. I'm always loyal. Am I really honest? Yes. But, no. And the way I'm talking, I actually have something. It was something called a, it was a voice thing. It was a voice. Either I talk like this or I talk like a robot. And nobody wants to hear me talk like a robot. So, it took a many years to be the person I am today. And if I didn't go through the life I had, all the struggles and issues. I wouldn't be the man I am today. So, 
more open about it. More open about having us mind up. That being that mindset I had years ago. It's just I, I just want to be myself. But I didn't say all that. But I didn't do all that. So, like it's tar- tough. Life is uh, getting kind of hard. Don't give up. Because you don't know what's in store in the future and what you can really uh, show what you're made of. I, absolutely. I, I can't say that any better than you did. Uh, let me just say, I speak for a lot of people when I say this, but thank thank God that you, when you were, when you were younger, didn't didn't become a statistic. Thank God that you are here because I, I'll speak, I'll speak for myself, but I, I know other people feel this way. I'm very happy that I got to meet you, and I'm very happy that I can call you a friend. So, thank you for keep keeping on fighting for all those years, and thank you for actually leaving the show with a positive message. Not too many people ever do that, and. And letting people know at home when life gets tough, just keep fighting. Don't quit because you're something. Yeah. Yeah, the biggest issue in my life was when I was growing up with autism, you can't find someone else with autism personally. Like meeting Alex, it was awesome. Someone else with autism that I can truly talk about. And we probably went through some similar stories, similar therapy sessions. It's or stuff that we can just say, yeah, that's tough, but we went through it. The toughest day I ever went through was um, in junior high. And I, and I tell somebody this a few days ago, and I was just crying because it was just so sad. I didn't know many people with autism, but this one kid accidentally shot his brains out. His name was Brady. And after his funeral, I got told he had, he had autism. And I was like, Oh God! And I was just—I was tough as school of practice, tough as day. And since then, I realized that my first friend in preschool had autism. My first friend—I had more friends that had autism, and I was just happy. And I discovered if—if if you may think you're alone, you're not. It's gonna take a while for you to find that person that makes you happy in life. It'll be. A, Blog before you find people that you actually didn't know something about you can actually that you can actually say, yeah, that, I have that was somebody that I have friendship with, and he, or I still have, he's that kind of person. I'm just gonna, and he makes me so happy. And my, it's been, it's been cool. It's been a good life. Uh, I don't plan to slow down. I don't plan to keep on. Uh, being a sadness, I want to be positive. I'm about to be 20 in next um, in November, and because this is October, it's being forward, But in November 13th, that's my birthday. I'm going to be 20. I passed that age. I'm 15. And I'm going to be so happy to live out the rest of my life the way I know I can plan to live it out, and that's happiness to the best of my ability. Well, that's that's fantastic. Thank, thank goodness for that, and well, th- thank you for sharing. Because you know, not m- maybe not everyone would be willing, but you're. But thank you for sharing and, and letting everyone know that. Uh, and also thank you again for coming on the show. Very much appreciate it. Got to talk about some cool stuff, uh, and I'm sure come the next time we'll have some more cool stuff to talk about. But yeah. Any any final words before we uh before we hit the end of the video? What a way to get fired. <laughs> what a yeah. way to get fired. What a way. Oh man. Sean Wall Show breaking ground. Thank you and thank you all for watching. Have a great day. Thank you everyone for listening to me and Sean, thank you for having me on the show. I really do appreciate it.